Right, today <coughs> uh, we're going to have a look at an air rifle, <coughs> a classic really, um, and it is the HW80. Now this particular one is a HW80 carbine, um, and uh, I've got a bit of history with, this rif with these rifles, because I bought one of these uh, the very first month that they were released. Um, and bizarrely enough, I bought it from exactly the same gun shop as I bought this one some 40 years later, um, which was Field Sports Equipping Rill. So the first one I bought was the uh, normal HW80. Uh, bought it off old Reg Gizzy in Field Sports Equipping Rill uh, back in the early 80s. And they'd only been out about a month or so, something like that. Um, and it was the full barreled one, 19 inch barrel I think I had. And it had that very square, um, square cut stock. Um, beautiful walnut coloured stock with hand cut checkering. And it was an absolute stunner of a rifle. Phenomenally powerful uh, and extremely accurate. It was a beautiful, beautiful rifle. Before that I'd had a 35E. Um, but the 80 was a lot more powerful and uh, more consistent. So, when this came up, I couldn't resist it. Uh, it's a carbine, second hand, uh, 177 calibre. Uh, and basically, it's exactly the same rifle. There are a few minor differences. Um, and those few minor differences, I personally think, are to the detriment of the rifle. Uh, apart from one thing that is a plus point and that one thing that's the plus point we'll cover that first is the ability to put a moderator on um, because they do generate a fair bit of noise these carbine versions so they now come screw uh, threaded on the end here UNF and uh, this one comes with a rather nice uh, Viro silencer they're about the best you can buy really uh, no open sights on the carbine version uh, obviously because of the silencer so you're relying on tele sights uh, now we come to the things that I think are a definite downward retrograde step from uh, the original one that I had first off the stock now I don't know what's going on with Virant but for a company that used to be renowned for its beautiful stylish stock stocks that could sit in a uh, a gun cabinet with the highest end shotguns and still look really good. Uh, nice dark stocks, hand cut checkering, beautiful stylish stocks. They've gone very bland. Um, I do not like this new stock. I don't like the rounded forend. I don't like the new colour that they seem to be bringing out. These new ones, even the new ones that are even newer than this, have got this like ones that I saw recently have got horrible sort of really sort of pale yellowy almost stocks that look awful they look cheap they look nasty it's not good it's not a good look in my opinion um, these rifles because of the class of them and the blue and all the rest of it they look much nicer in a darker stock that matches the action instead of these horrible pale stocks the stocks remind me of the sort of things you get on smks and uh, hat sands and crowls and stuff like that and putting this wire out stamping, thankfully this hasn't got it, but some of them have got a wire out stamped in it as well. It's just not, it's just nasty. There should be a classy gun for wire out. They don't need that. They should just have a lovely classic stock like they used to have. Um, and the other thing I don't like is common with all wire outs now, and it's all this nonsense stamping on the side here. Absolute load of rubbish and completely unnecessary. You know, if you don't need, if you don't know how to handle a rifle, you shouldn't be shooting a rifle. You know, you shouldn't need to have warning labels all over the gun telling you, you know, that you should read the owner's manual before use and all this lot of warning stamped all over it. It's an air rifle. It should. It should be blatantly obvious. That it's potentially dangerous. It's farcical. Right, rant over. 
But apart from those, apart from the stock and the ridiculous stamping that all these fire have have now, um, basically it's exactly the same rifle as I had before. And beautiful. They are so well made. The metal work, the bluing. I mean, this one's second hand one. This has seen a rough life. It's seen a lot of use. Um, now, when I bought it, um, the gunsmith uh, in Field Sports Equip uh, put a new mainspring in, new piston washer, new breech seal, um, and lubed it all up properly. Um, but this has had quite a hard life. Um, it's got a few little scratches and marks on it, and the blue on the barrel's a little bit thin. But overall, I must admit that overall it's in really nice condition. And it shoots superbly. It's so smooth. Proper smooth action on it. Shooting about 11 and a half foot pounds, uh, depending on pellets, obviously. But with pellets, it seems to prefer. Um, I'm using HMNs in this. Um, it seems to like those. Um, field target trophies, it likes those. Uh, very accurate with them. And uh, it's about 11 and a half foot pounds with it. Um, stock design on it fairly nice cheap piece pronounced checkering thankfully uh, they stuck to the uh, normal rather stylish checkering uh, on new ones they've got this weird sort of fish scaly checkering uh, record trigger renowned even now still one of the best springer triggers going um, everyone's tried to copy this trigger it's just one of the best triggers going it's been around for donkey's years still one of the best it's a superb trigger nice predictable let off crisp you can get it fairly light it's got the normal uh, via out um, safety catch cross bolt safety catch at the top really nicely cut deep grooves for telescopic sight with uh, the rest of block holes on the top and a really beefy um, breech block the breech is so beefy really solidly engineered a really nice fit and a great big bolt straight through as well so you could tension up any play not that you'd probably get any it's so well made unlike the exports the 35 I mean and the, this has got a solid bar cocking lever not the articulated link and uh, it's a really big thick chunky piece of metal so overall really really nice rifle it's nice to have a HW80 back in the collection it's been a long long time um, and it doesn't disappoint other than the stock um, there's nothing I can do about the um, the warning engraving stuff that's put on it that's unfortunately there to stay but the stock uh, first thing I'm going to do is take this colour down it's too light for my liking it's, um, it's got a few marks on it as well so at the same time so I'll take this colour down stain it a much darker colour darker walnut colour and see how it looks and if I'm still not happy with it uh, I will probably buy a custom sporting walnut stock for it Possibly a thumb hole stock actually would be nice on one of these. Um, but that's for later on. Um, so yeah, what a brilliant gun. They are beautiful. They're heavy. It's a heavy rifle. Scoped up probably over nine pounds. So it's no lightweight. But they are, as they always have been, beautifully balanced. I mean, it's a really nicely balanced rifle. Um, reasonable amount of effort required to cock it but nothing nothing really nothing over the top so just so well made though they're so solid fantastic rifles um and like i say really really well put together and well made it's nice to see that Bayerauk have kept uh, not only the 35e well the 35 in their catalog of guns but also keep making this and the 77 and the 97 classic top quality air rifles and if I've got a little hint for someone who's in the thinking of starting out in air guns and they're looking around for a first air rifle to buy um, 
these second hand are a fantastic thing to buy. Number one, they're one of the best Springer Air Rifles you'll ever see. Uh, yes, they haven't got the uh, some of the daft bells and whistles on that you see some of the, these more modern design guns coming in from Turkey and China and whatnot, you know, uh, adjustable bits and bobs and flick down bloody bipod mounts and all sorts of other nonsense, different coloured stocks and contoured rubberized grips and things. They haven't got any of that nonsense. They're just a basic, solid, well-made air rifle. Um, but the thing with one of these is you buy a second hand one of these. Number one, you get a reliable, superbly well-made, accurate air rifle. And number two, if you can manage to get yourself an early 80s version of one of these, not only will it still shoot as good as anything today, but also it'll hold its value, if not go up in value. Um, the same thing can't be said of a Kral or a Hatsan or a Benjamin or uh, all those other um, springers that appeared on the scene. They're only going to go one way. They're going to go down. If you can find a nice 1980s um, Virag Springer, the 80 or the underlever ones, the 77, 97, buy one of them instead. It might be second hand, might have a few little marks on it, but it'll outshoot them. Um, and, and for 50, 60 quid, you can get a complete overhaul at a gunsmith's. They'll put a new spring in, new piston washer, new breech seal, lubricate it. It'll be as good as new. It doesn't need a tube. You just do that, it'll be as good as new. And it'll outshoot almost everything that's currently on the market. And if you can get one from the 80s, um, it will go up in value or at least hold its value as long as you keep it. So when you come to sell it, you'll get back exactly what you paid for it. They're brilliant, these things. Brilliant. That's why they've been around so long. Just such, such good guns. So there it is. I will do a video of me uh, out in the field shooting this rifle at some stage or other. Um, if the weather stays as it is at the minute, it'll probably be next week. Um, but what a fantastic gun, it's so nice to have one back. Though I do still think, hand on heart, that my uh, that the original one, with that original stock, um, and without all this nonsensical writing, was a, a nicer looking air rifle, even though basically it's the same one. Um, I just could not find an early Mark I um, that was around. So, there you go, thanks for watching. HW80, beautiful thing.